good things from caregivers um, or will be hearing depends on the order I put them in but sometimes it's good to have a little background about TBI if you don't have TBI now most of us on this page have some form of brain injury whether it's from TBI or from something else that has caused some brain kind of fogginess or whatever so the day for some of us it is wasn't a gradual thing and so that's kind of what I'm talking about is the BAM one day you are you and you're flying around like crazy the next day you are a patient <laughs> you are in trouble um, I found out later that I had a two out of a ten of making it uh, they didn't tell me that because they saw that I was very stubborn <laughs> I didn't have time to die, thank you. Um, but one thing uh, eventually that I found very helpful, and you know, it, it took me forever to accept. And sometimes we consider acceptance uh, giving up, but actually, it's not. We can't move on and do what we need to do to help ourselves until we are uh, accepted. And acceptance isn't very pleasant. And maybe you've noticed that but one of the things I decided to do was because I could not express my thoughts I had to I had aphasia which means you cannot find the words to express yourself or you use the wrong words or you don't know how to put a sentence together I would do sentences backwards jumbled you know you name it which I think is quite talented myself but anyway so I drew now this is not gonna look right but what I want you to see is just this what I was drawing and explaining to myself <laughs> is that this is March 12th. Before March 12th, I had a life, a good beating heart life. After that, it began to get less and I flatlined. And I even have that my life that I knew it was buried at 3.20 p.m. March 12th, 2001. Gave the area, um, was, and gave kind of the reason what happened. It was not my fault. Um, so I, I mentioned that a life lost, um, but not a soul um, or a spirit. And I think that sometimes when we look at people who have an invisible disability, we forget that they have lost their life, but not their soul not themselves, not their feelings, not their emotions. And we seem to, sometimes the stories I'm hearing are horrendous. And I either do not get out a lot or I am surrounded by very nice people. I'm not sure which, but um, <laughs> probably both. But it is it is amazing to me. Now I've had some of this happen to me, but to the extent that some have had, I. I just am blown away but um, you know what was interesting is I let eventually after about the second or third day I let people know because I realized this was not going to be an accident that I would get over in oh you know a day or two <laughs> like I had thought um, so I called my mother and and I'm you know kind of glossed over everything and you know called a couple of people called my friends let my friends know and while this is not a big deal, it is interesting that one friend sent a flower arrangement. And I remember it coming to the door and being so surprised. Um, and, and that has, you know, really stood out to me that somehow she recognized or was moved to do or whatever but it really meant a lot and that doesn't mean that what anybody else did didn't mean anything it was just so out of the ordinary um but you know what i found is just getting you if you're a newbie getting you just some book that doesn't have lines or lines if you want it you can do whatever you want to do <laughs> and occasionally when your emotions are starting to build is to draw because what you will if you just eventually let go you will start writing or drawing things that is are pouring out that you didn't really know was there 
And that's why I really recommend this done or journaling. Sometimes we start out with a journal. Today I did, da, 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 you know. But if you soon relax, then your hand takes over and your heart writes. And when I go back and I read those things, you can hear, you can feel the hurt, the ache, the pain, just of the pain, <laughs> just of what has to be done, uh, the circumstances, whatever it is. And, but it's a way to get it out because it's very hard to talk. And it's very hard for someone to sit and listen for as long as you need to get this out. Um, but anyway, so, uh, you know, I have, I have here different lines of, of different types of people. You know, I have them listed as far as, you know, who they, who they are, not names, uh, you know, friends, family, whatever. And, and just notes, you know, just little notes of, of, you know, being judgmental and not understanding and and just writing that down so that I, I don't really say it, but it gets it out and it helps a lot. Um, one thing is um, I wrote on here, I look the same, I am the same, but words spoken are conflicting past versus now. Past, your home is a haven. This is what we used to hear. We love coming. I love talking to you. I value your advice. Thank you for your open home. Now, I am going by not what is said, or then rather, not what is said, but the actions that I'm perceiving. I don't want to come. It might mean I have to do something. I'm busy thinking of you. And of course, some of these do come from <laughs> text. Prayers for you. I'm sorry. You live so far. At least you have Charles. Yes, at least I have Charles. He also has a full-time day job. At least, uh, I mean, but you look fine. And you know, some people get very offended with that. Now, it depends on, of course, the tone of voice that's being used. But when people tell me, you look good, then I have achieved the goal that I'm trying to achieve. I do not want to look ill. I do not want to look like a disabled person. I do not want to look like I'm chronically ill. I don't want to look like I have TBI. I want to look just as normal as everyone else. So when I hear it and I hear the tone of voice that is a compliment, then I am excited, happy, whatever, because I have achieved what I have tried, started out to achieve. Now, when you hear it as, well, you look fine, you hear it as, and exactly what's wrong with you? <laughs> you look fine. What are you doing parking over there? What are you doing with a service dog? What are you doing with this? What are you doing? You know, that is is um, not very healing, I guess you might say, um, and more on the judgmental part. And as we know, being judgmental in any situation, I don't care what it is, is not helpful. Not helpful at all mentally, emotionally, spiritually, anything. Um, so, you know, I, I just have, I just have, and sometimes there's no pictures. It's all words, um, you know, and, and just things that are coming to my head. And it's like, I've got to get it out in, in paper so that I can process this. It's very hard, as you probably know, if you have TBI, to process. And it's like some, you know, something gets up there and it goes, yeah, now where, let's see, let's, where does it go? Okay, here's, here's a route, here's a route. And eventually you process. And many times we do, uh, as usual, processing while we're talking. Um, so while we're talking, we might be talking about ourselves and what we're going through, but we're actually processing this and trying to get it in our head. And we are trying to come up with answers. You know what? Guess what? You don't have to fix it. That's not what we're asking. If you can handle it, 
every once in a while to just let someone blow, <laughs> they're processing. And you're helping that person heal by just understanding, yes, oh, that must be awful. Oh, you know, how, well, what does that look like? You know, how, how does that make you feel? And then you start letting go. But when you are put in a position where there's accusations or whatever, you don't, it's very hard to process and it's very hard to let go. It's not an excuse, but, um, you know, I have one here that I've got little clouds, you know, dreams. What, what are my dreams? And I have these dreams and, you know, that's something that has to be grieved and we don't just get over it. And that's one thing that those that have depression um, as an illness say, you, you, you know, it, it really drives them nuts when you say, just get over it. Well, if you're, you know, some of you are dog lovers, get over it. If your dog dies, some of you have parents that have died. Well, get over it. Okay. We died. Ourselves died. We are no longer ourselves. It's a different person and we are getting to know this person and we're also faking it. We're pretending that we're the same person and yet we're not. So we're not going to get over it. And that is probably one of the worst things that can be said. Um, anyway, so I, I wanted to give you that tip is, you know, getting you some kind of a notebook. Um, you can hide it if you don't want anybody to see it. Sometimes it's nice to leave it where your husband or caregiver, whatever, can see it so that they do see what's going on in your head um, because sometimes they're, they can be helpful. It just depends. So, um, you know, with TBI, there are so many things that come involved. Everything functions from the brain, right? Our brain says walk. Our brain says, you know, move. Our brain says breathe. Our brain says heartbeat. Our, you know, it tells us everything. So when something is damaged, it's going to appear somewhere in the body, whether it's visible or invisible. And when it's invisible, we're happy <laughs> because really we don't want it to be visible. But, um, you know, in my case, most people are very shocked to discover that I had to learn to read again. Um, the words would switch over and do all these funny things. And so while I might could read, sort of, it was trying to put it together and that made sense. And that was quite difficult. So it was, <laughs> I did some interesting things. Um, you know, one time I was doing something and my husband looked at me and, and I said, what happened? And he said, you just said a complete sentence perfectly backwards. I said, well, that's quite talented, um, you know, but you, you may even sometimes it's not the voice inflection. So you may say something that is a joking way, or you may just say something, but because of the lack of voice or correct voice inflection, it comes across totally wrong. Now, if you are the person, <laughs> not the, not the TBI, -er, if you are the person the best thing you can do, if this person is that type, I'm very open. I wish people would help me. I like for them to help me, but I also like for them to be to do it very respectfully. Kathy, I don't know if you know what you just said. <laughs> um, it's a little comical and it doesn't, it's not you. And then tell me, because, you know, I don't want to acquire habits that caused me to take a long time to un-inquire habits. <laughs> so, you know, we can get into this groove when people kind of, you know, baby you and everything. You, you know, and I have been called stupid and I have been called other things by those that are, should not be calling me that. That's very disrespectful. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the gentle guiding that you would as a child with a child. We are child. <laughs> and I remember telling my husband, can you treat me as if I'm a two year old? Repeat kindly, repeat, repeat, um, you know, say it slowly, say it simply. So we don't mind that, but we do mind if it's not done in a proper and way. We are adults. 
and we would like to be treated as an adult. And I know that sometimes it, when you're not aware of this, it, it gets very frustrating, but we can hear, you don't have to talk louder. We can hear, uh, unless we can't, <laughs> of course, some people can't, but you know, we wanted to be, we want to be treated the same. So to take that load off of your shoulders, you don't have to do anything special for us. Just treat us as if you would your friend and hopefully where you are, we are your friend. And if you get kind of tired of us, that's all right. Disappear for a while. Tell us you're going to, you know, take a hide. That's the way we call it. And, and, and we won't expect to hear from you. Honesty, just be honest. Now, you know, I'm, I know there's people out there that get their feelings hurt quite easily. Then think of a way that you can say something that will, you know, smooth things over. If they get their feelings hurt, if they're that sensitive, then you're always going to be kind of, you know, there's always going to be an issue. So, you know, sometimes it may be best for both of you to separate yourselves, <laughs> but typically, typically all anyone with an invisible disability, whatever, what they're looking for is just kindness, understanding, non-judgmental uh, attitudes. So um, hopefully that helps. And one thing that we do want to do is to be a good patient because obviously someone is having to take care of us. They're putting food in front of us. They are running errands. They're doing a lot of things. And when we, if we complain a lot, then that will stop because it's going to stop anyway. That's the sad part, but it tends to stop early because people realize I can't please her. I can't please him. It doesn't matter what I do. And I'm going to save myself the grief of being torn apart. So I'm going to have to separate myself. So that was something that was very much uh, on my mind. And it's also biblical. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm not here to you know bang on the Bible, but I do believe that that is a very good guiding place and it can help us know how to act in certain situations. Um, and it is my role as a patient to be as nice and kind and gentle as I possibly can. Now, there are times that I have to hope that there's mercy. I have to hope that they understand that this is not me. It didn't come from me. And, and I'm really sorry when I hear about it. So it's a, a very tricky little subject. Um, and then it's trickier wherever the damage is done. And it can cause, you know, I'm so fortunate because it did not get to the deep, deep part of the area of the brain that is me. Now, you know, while I have said things, it didn't get to the part that really, really matters. But it did last year. I had a brain injury last year again with mercury poisoning and it did get into that area. I did say things I would never ever say. I probably, you know, no telling. I don't want to know because it's too painful for what I do know. And that's when we have to realize that person needs our mercy. And of all things, that person needs our love because it is a horrible thing. And I did separate myself because I didn't know what I would do or say. And I wasn't sure if that person would be understanding and would still be my friend. So it does weed out a lot of friends. And like, you know, I think my husband's mentioned one place, you know, we can count them on one hand and have fingers left over, but at least, you know, they're your true friends. And that's what matters in life, isn't it? So have a good day, make your list, check it twice. And just don't worry, let it go as it's, it's now the new you, but not for long. Focus on, I'm going to get better and do whatever you can find to help yourself. And if getting better is raising the bar three inches, my throw a party. Don't expect, you know, <laughs> expect a miracle, but, but if you get three inches, rejoice. How's that? Have a good day. Thank you for listening.